The FAA reauthorization bill has a section requiring the FAA to conduct research and development to mitigate the impact of turbulence. As part of this, it requires the agency to conduct R&D to understand the impacts of climate change and other factors on the nature of turbulence. My amendment changes this requirement to focus on the impacts of weather rather than climate change. Weather patterns are a common cause of turbulence, jet streams, storms, and the movements of warm fronts and cold fronts can all cause it. Mr. Speaker, this is, a, again, a common sense amendment. I urge adoption. I reserve. Here's gentleman from, for what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? I seek recognition to stand in opposition to this amendment. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in opposition to it. Uh, this amendment would direct the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration to ignore climate change as it studies the impacts of weather on the nature of turbulence. To deny the existence of climate change is to deny reality. There are copious amounts of data to show that climate change has been happening for decades. Recently, we've all experienced con consecutive days of 90 plus degree heat here in Washington, D.C., as well as we've seen sustained increases in temperatures across the country. In fact, June 2023 was the hottest June ever recorded on the planet, according to uh, NASA. The scientific definition of weather refers to short-term atmospheric conditions, while climate change refers to long-term patterns and shifts in our climate. The dramatic shifts caused by climate change are not merely weather, and to limit the NOAA's ability to study climate change would neglect our responsibility for ensuring safe air travel. Studying these long-term patterns and understanding how they impact turbulence is critical to putting the best safety practices in place, as well as understanding how to mitigate the impacts of turbulence. The NOAA, the NOAA excuse me, must have the authority to gather the data we need to help keep Americans safe in the air, reduce flight delays, and improve our understanding of changing atmospheric conditions. Not less, not, let us not force uh, NOAA to put its head in the ground uh, while climate change is happening all around us. Therefore, uh, if you're with me and us, uh, you'll oppose this amendment, and I encourage more and the majority of my colleagues to do the same. And with that, I will reserve. Gentlemen, reserves. Gentlemen from Tennessee is recognized. Mr. Speaker, as indicated by my colleague, the definition would, of climate change is a long-term event. A, a flight and turbulence would be a short-term occurrence. So what we're talking about is weather in a moment on a duration of a flight and how it impacts said flight. It's changing weather, not climate change change that's to blame on your flight to and from D.C., Mr. Speaker. We don't measure climate change over duration of a flight, but this is what we're talking about, the duration of a flight, turbulence that impacts flights while they're in the air. As we develop a better understanding of how the weather impacts turbulence, people may better understand how, it instance, how instances of turbulence might differ under different times. And again, Mr. Speaker, what we're trying to say is let us not allow agendas to slip in to the mission. And so I urge adoption of my amendment. This is common sense, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for his comments. I reserve. Gentlemen reserves. The chair reminds members and staff not to traffic the well. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Speaker, long-term weather patterns affect turbulence, and that's what we need to study. We should not deny that there will be long-term effects of climate change. We should not 
uh, ignore the fact that climate change is real and is happening today. Uh, so to force uh, our government to not look at these weather patterns long term is very short sighted. Let's plan for this turbulence as we come to grips with climate change. And with that, I will reserve the balance and I'm ready to close. Gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Tennessee is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, thank you to my colleague for his comments. I just want to just emphasize that, you know, if we allow or we encourage the FAA to study climate change, if it were, it's going to lead to a boondoggle. The FAA is busy enough. They've got enough on their hands. It makes sense to study weather patterns and to study turbulence. It does not make sense to allow woke ideologies to slip into the mission statement of an agency whose primary charter is to keep those in the air safe. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate your time. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. Safe travel in the future depends on the FAA's ability to predict long-term weather patterns. And so that requires us to study the effects of climate change. That's what we need to do now. We need to do it to protect ourselves, our wives, our husbands, our children, our grandparents. We don't want any of our loved ones to die. Uh, so uh, let's do the studying that we need in order to mitigate the effects of our previous ignoring of uh, climate change as a phenomenon. Let's study it, let's come to grips with it, let's make things safer uh, for the traveling public as we proceed forward. And that's what we're doing under this FAA reauthorization bill. This amendment hurts that process, and for that reason, I oppose it. I ask for my colleagues to do the same, and with that, I will yield uh, back the balance of my time. 